right, we're going to uh, have Jeff make up another one of his, what's, what are we calling it this time? What are we calling what? I, I have to check the list. Um, it's a special formulation from Jeff. Okay, we'll vote as soon as they sit down and they stop talking. Did you taste it? Did you taste it? <laughs> okay. How are we doing? You sick of ice cream yet? No, are you kidding? When I make, on a day I make ice cream and I make six, seven flavors, which is about 40 some odd gallons, you taste a lot of ice cream. Okay, uh, vote. Um, Steve asked me to make another flavor. What should we make? M&M ice cream or hazelnut crunch ice cream? Okay, hands, M&M. Okay. All right, my M&M ice cream, this is one of the ones that's in my book because this was um, one of the, uh, Steve, I need the center of the uh, blender. This was one of the original six flavors I started my store with. Just a little history here so you understand. I don't use any of those things there or any of these things here. My philosophy is to make everything that you're used to. And what I do is I walk through supermarkets and grocery stores and I see things that in my mind would make a great dessert. So when people come into my store, and this happens every night, they see the M&M ice cream on my board and they say, is that vanilla? And I say, no. And they say, oh, you mean it's chocolate? And I say, no. You'll see how this M&M ice cream is M&M ice cream. And all of my uh, formulas, uh, 20 of which are in the book there, and I started with, I still have these 20 for sale every day. That's how good they were. I've added more, but you'll see how you can walk through a store, see something that looks good, and uh, try it and make an ice cream out of it. Last month in this room, I tried something and it turned out to be wildly popular. I saw in the store, I was walking up and down the grocery store and I saw a Jello no-bake cheesecake. So I brought it here, I bought two boxes, I brought it here and I dumped it in to a big uh, bucket, added some mix till I tasted what I liked and then we made ice cream and afterwards I made it turtle cheesecake by adding caramel and fudge running ribbons through it. And I have it at the store every day. It's really a popular product. Uh, but you can make any flavor of uh, cheesecake. We have cherry cheesecake ice cream. We have turtle cheesecake ice cream. You can do any flavors you want. And that was just seeing it on the shelf. So when I saw M&M's, which is something I really like, and I know he does, that's why I haven't opened the bag yet, because they'd be half gone. <laughs> Uh, now also people ask me, can you use the, the bogus ones, you know, the ones without the M on them? And of course you can. Uh, I don't. You know, it's more expensive, but it's your ice cream. You should be proud of the ice cream you make. I'm very proud of the ice cream I make, and you should be too, because that will reflect to your customers. So let's make M&M ice cream. Now one of the products I use I started with um, a barter for the, uh, for the things I needed at the store. And one of the things I bartered for was a KitchenAid mixer. And the other thing was a Cuisinart food processor. And that's what I would make all my stuff in until I discovered an amazing product. And once again, we don't get paid for any endorsements or anything. Uh, <laughs> and one of the things I discovered was the Ninja. You've seen the infomercials on TV, and all I can tell you is it is the most amazing product ever. It takes the place of a food processor, a KitchenAid mixer, and we have three of them at the store. We make shakes in them. And the reason they're so good is, <laughs> I feel like a commercial for them, these three <laughs> blades. 
Uh, I have a Vitamix at home. You're going to cough all during this? I have a Vitamix at home, which is one blade on the bottom. And all blenders are one blade on the bottom. They just can't do the work that this one does. So you'll see, because of the M&Ms, we're going to start from M&Ms, and we have to grind them up. Uh, so I have a little scale here. Actually, Steve has a big scale here. And we're going to zero it out with a bowl on it, which doesn't weigh anything. Is this thing on? Does that have an on offer? Yes. Um, and I'll zero it. OK. And we're going to start with uh, which machine? This one right here, right? Yes. OK. So we'll start with 32 ounces of M&Ms. That's eight. Sixteen. How many did I say we need? 32. 24 and 8 would be 32. So there's the M&Ms in the uh, Ninja. And what we want to do is we want to reduce them to powder so that they dissolve in the cream. What I said was you can't overdo it. Uh, this blender, this is an old ninja, you have to hold it down for it to work. You let it go, it stops. In the store, I bought two more ninjas. They're the newer models, the 1100 if you're looking. And they just have a switch so I can set it, walk away. You can't over pulverize these things. And you can start to see how the flavor of the ice cream is going to be. It's going to be M&M's and cream, which is really all this is. It's M&M, cream, and vanilla. So that's pretty basic, isn't it? I would say 95% of my recipes are cream, vanilla, and something. Today the something is M&M's. Uh, do you have one of those flexible three-gallon? Uh, mm. hmm. I don't think so. No. OK. Well, OK. All right, and we're going to do five quarts of mix. Now, we can't, we don't have a big enough vessel to do five quarts of mix, so it doesn't matter. We'll just dissolve it in whatever we have and then add the rest in cream. Do you get that? You get that. Do you get it? All right. So this is uh, two quarts. Uh, I guess we can add three. Now remember that we have to, we're going to start with three quarts of mix. So remember that we have to add two more later, OK? All right, that's three. Uh-oh. Did my uh, thing just... <laughs> I'm dangling. Not to brag. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, the M&Ms. And one of the other inventions that I have is the mixer. Because it's a larger quantity than fits in there, we're going to take a household drill. She's laughing already, that girl. The yawner. She's laughing. And uh, this is a, uh, 
This is a paint mixer, a Home Depot paint mixer for $3. And I cut off about four inches of it. And that's how we're going to mix our M&Ms. So we pour this stuff in here. Mix it up. Can I have uh, five ounces of vanilla? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, who's laughing now, huh? They really want to applaud at this point, but they're not. What's that, four and a half ounces? Three and a half. Three and a half ounces. So that would be three ounces, and that would be two ounces. And we'll just give it another little mix. At my place, in my store, I have uh, three gallon uh, uh, vessels and so I would do it all at once but it really doesn't matter because these machines just another plug and I, believe me I don't get paid for this you can throw anything in these machines you can throw chips nuts cherries frozen fruit fresh fruit anything and the machine takes care of it now the big question is we didn't clean this right it's okay though because we ran honey vanilla that's right okay so we're going to put how many quarts of mix? Five or five all together. This is three, right? Three. Okay. So we'll put three in here with the pulverized M&Ms. And then two more, right? two more. When you lift these up, give them a chokehold so nothing shoots out, and then grab it from the seam. And that's two more. Start it up. 170 again. That sounds good. And what I add to this is uh, mini chips. Because it's not sweet enough for me. <laughs> uh, I, I normally add a full quart. To this, I'll add half a quart because it's a half a batch, basically. So that's a full quart. And you can't make a mistake with this. If you like chocolate a lot more, add more. But the M&M ice cream is pretty good, you'll see. OK, and that's it. Now we turn this baby on, right? Yep. OK, M&M ice cream. And you can see why people ask, is it vanilla ice cream? I think most people are used to vanilla ice cream with M&Ms thrown in them. And this, is, this isn't that. Uh, this is M&M this is ice cream, which is pretty good. If M&M company made ice cream, this is how they would do it. So this is what we do. Any questions? Come on, you're killing me here. What's that? I do. I do. And I can. Because I use M&Ms, and it's M&M ice cream. Why the chips instead of just more M&Ms? 
What's that? Why the chips instead of just Well, the M&Ms are already dissolved. So there's, there's, you'll just see tiny little flecks of the colors, but this gives it a little crunch reminiscent of M&Ms. Uh, and it's also M&Ms are milk chocolate. The chips are dark chocolate. It's a nice deal going on. You don't have to do it. You can do anything. You can add nuts to it if you want. You can add cherries. You can add watermelon rind. You can do whatever you want. Uh, just a, another shameless plug, Steve. Just so you understand, well, this is important. Just so you understand, on the cover of the book that I wrote, it says make incredible ice cream without buying jugs, cans, or jars of flavoring or coloring, which is all that. It says instead go supermarketing. And that's the best thing you can do, in my opinion. Not everybody's opinion, but my opinion. And since I've made a million dollars in three years, my opinion's worth something. And you can too. I mean, I started, you won't believe what I started with, under $10,000. And I've got um, a million dollar business now, very successful, five expansions. Um, and you can do it too. It's, it's so ridiculously easy to start on a shoestring. Sorry. No, I agree. <sighs> okay, so what next? Yes. If you were going to just pour in like cherries or pineapple or something like that, how, how much would it chop it up? Would it be really fine? Good question. The answer you is if you, the question. The question is if you're going to add other ingredients, nuts, chips, cherries, strawberries, whatever, would it chop them up real fine? My experience is if you add them at the very beginning, it will chop them up fine. If you want them a little bit uh, more full, add them in the middle. And if you want them just as pretty much you're adding them, add them at the end. I make a lot with maraschino cherries. If you've ever eaten ice cream that has maraschino cherries, they're like rocks. They're like frozen pebbles in your mouth. And they're, I don't like it that way. That's why I don't make strawberry ice cream that way, because strawberry ice cream, you get those hard rocks of strawberries, no good. So if, what I do is I take the maraschino cherries and I add them right as I add the mix. It chops them up for me. The machine is amazing. Uh, I mean, you can add, I make a, am I talking too fast? Talking no, too much? Okay. I'm going to elaborate on what you're saying. I make a vanilla caramel praline. Do you know what pralines are? Pralines are pecans. Uh, put in the oven with brown sugar and butter on them, and they come out, smells great, but they come out hard. I put them in the freezer, they're like rocks. So I use the Ninja to grind them down a little bit, but I still put them in the beginning of the batch. Two reasons. First of all, you get little pieces of them. Second of all, the smaller the piece of whatever you add, the more flavor it's going to spread through your ice cream. So if you really get a zillion little small pieces, just like the M&Ms, this ice cream will taste just like M&Ms. Whereas if I took the regular mix, added M&Ms at the end, it would, you wouldn't taste the M&Ms so much. It would be basically bland ice cream with M&Ms thrown in. This is the big difference between our machines and all others. As I mentioned earlier, we put Haagen-Dazs, Ben & Jerry, <clears throat> Breyers, Bluebell, Hershey, Virtually any ice cream you've ever eaten growing up was first made on Emory Thompson. And then the companies grow into millions of gallons a day, and they have to go on to what's called a commercial freezer or a continuous freezer. A continuous freezer is a 10-foot lo long, narrow tube, only about this big, and it only, for the most part, makes vanilla. And then it rams through 1,000 gallons an hour, comes out the front, and then there's a $40,000 machine here that injects the strawberries, the M&Ms, the cookies. So commercial ice cream is vanilla ice cream with strawberries injected into it, or M&Ms injected into it. It's still vanilla ice cream. Haagen-Dazs and Ben & Jerry, when they were first made, were on Emory Thompson batch freezers. And I developed two terms called fruit flavor and fruit identity. With, uh, with an Emory Thompson, you can't do this with any other batch freezer. They'll void your warranty if you put pecans into the machine, or cookies, or nuts. You just, they won't even allow you. But if I'm making um, a butter pecan ice cream, and I throw whole pecans into the machine, they're hard, and they'll break up into quarters, which is just the size I want. Uh, so it, to save money, Jeff, what uh, you do is you buy a box of pecan pieces because they're not going to break up any further, and you save money over whole pecans. 
But let's switch over to strawberry ice cream. That's a, strawberry is a good fruit flavor, fruit identity. If I take, if my recipe calls for two quarts of strawberries, and I put one quart into the machine, and you're blindfolded, and I ask you to taste that ice cream, you'll say, oh yeah, that's, that's strawberry ice cream. You take the blindfold off, and all you see is a pale pink ice cream with little seeds. Hey, where are the strawberries? But it's got the taste, it's got the fruit flavor, but it doesn't have the identity. We eat with our eyes, and there's no chunks in there. So I take the second half of my strawberries, and instead of opening the gate all the way and getting the ice cream out in 35 seconds, I'm taking about a minute to get it out, and I'm shaking in my pieces of strawberry. So I have the strawberry flavor because it went into the machine for every particle of dairy there's a particle of strawberry next to it very intense flavor and i have my identity because i can see chunks of it so that's the way i make ice cream and you can only do it on emory thompson because the beaters and the drive system are so strong that we can throw anything at it i make when i make oreo cookie ice cream uh, most oreo cookie ice creams in the supermarket are white with pieces of Oreo in it. Well, I take one bag of Oreo cookies and I dump them right in the machine. It turns the ice cream an Oreo cookie color. And again, if you tasted it, it's very intense Oreo cookie. Uh, and then I have the, I take each cookie and snap it into thirds uh, and put them in a bucket. And then as the ice cream's coming out, I'm shaking in my pieces. So fruit flavor and fruit identity are very critical. And again, if it's something hard, like if we threw in chocolate chips, um, like these chips, these are small mini chips. If we put them in right now, they're not going to change. They're not going to dissolve. They're not going to disappear. They'll be in the ice cream. So I can add something like this right at the uh, at any time in the batch that I want. They will not change. The whole nuts will break in quarters, so by quarter pieces. Uh, soft fruits like strawberries, bananas uh, will completely puree, so that ice cream has a very intense. Uh, banana ice cream. That's why your ice cream is better than anybody else on the market. You're ready. Go for it. That was fast. That was ahead of schedule. And can you see that? If you can step to the side, Jeff. See how fast that's coming out? We can do it that way, or we can, um, or we, we can pull it out fast like that, or we can slow it down a little bit and add nuts and cookies. This looks good. I'm going to take this out to package. Uh, I suggest when you make an ice cream, you have some mints in your pocket. And that sort of lets you taste the flavors when they're, when they're ready. Just, just me. And there's also a trick that allows you to get the last bit out. Fire it up and uh, stick your spatula in there. But Steve doesn't worry about that now. What's that? Well, you don't worry about this, like this last quart. It doesn't bother you. Well, not if I'm pay not paying for it. Right. <laughs> My M&Ms, right. right? Yes, that's right. But you, you do have to care about, care about it. It's profit. Okay, let's taste this. No chickening out now. 